thing. So, you know, this I'm, I'm from the restaurant industry. Um, I had a food truck mm-hmm. in Austin for many years, uh, you know, awesome, you know, love food, right? We're sponsored by Texas Real Foods. It's a big deal for us. We push food on here. We support, you know, all the local farmers and ranchers. And I'm all about that local food. And I there's a big it. thing. There's a big thing among chefs of I don't have any formal training. But I worked for so many other chefs in restaurants and this and that in, in the world. So not just in yes. America. But so, but there's this thing in the restaurant industry, sort of what you're saying, like some chefs had formal training and they went to culinary school and they this and that and they got out and blah, blah, blah. But they had a mm-hmm. lot of bad habits and they had these things and maybe they didn't know certain things, right? And, and other chefs who had no formal training, but had worked with particular chefs and this and that were awesome, right? They just have mm-hmm. these great habits and this and that. And I remember this one chef, John, shout out to Chef John. He's been on the podcast, um, John Thompson. Um, he told me this one time. I'll just never forget it. It was years and years and years ago when I worked for Chef Stephen Piles. And he said, um, basically, like, look, dude, if I were you, I wouldn't go to culinary school. What I would do is take that money mm-hmm. and use it to live off of and go work for different chefs for six months at a time right? For two years, just go boom, 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 and go work for different things that you want to learn, right? You want to Mm -hmm. learn this technique, go work for this chef. You want to learn this style of food. And it's not kind of like for music, right? You want to learn this and that, like go here and do that. So that's interesting that you, you know, was that your plan the whole time? Or did you ever think along the line, no, I do want to get some sort of education or you never, you strayed away from it. I really appreciate hearing about your process. So I love like hearing this about you, you as a kid being like, I want to be at this show. (laughs) (laughs) That's so cool. It's really cute. Um, I was never that person. So um, my deal is like, um, I kind of, I sort of, I started out really as a poet and a musician separately. And it took me uh, several years to join them up so I had these two strains that were developing on their own and it was this um gradual process so I'm really not a performer like I um I mean I love my fans and I I want to you know do the best thing for them but like I hate standing in front of like standing in the lights, you know, I do not really? want to do that. No, really? I hate it. So wow. I'm a writer, okay. you know, and writers are shy. <laughs> they don't know what to do with the fucking spotlight, you know, like I, that. No, I don't know. So, um, And like, I'm grateful, you know, that some people like that style of performance. Like it basically, it's like a real like inner concentration, you know? And like, to me, the music is, and the, I mean, the performance is important, but it's not like showbiz. (laughs) It's more like, uh, you know, some inner experience. It's like a, no, unfortunately. Um, and that's why I like having really cute people in my band, you know, <laughs> I like, you feel like it takes the attention off of you. I like and so having, you can just sing. I, yeah. I like having badasses in my band. Um, I mean, that's of course. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Who might, might be more into showing off than me, but it's interesting. Like the culture around music is not set up that way. And like every single time I go into a venue, I have to remember, you know, to say to the lighting people, light the entire band, because sometimes they put them all in the dark. And I'm like, do you see how cute this guitar player is? No, we need to light on him. <laughs> That's funny. That is <laughs> or funny. like, you know. I love watching a drummer, you know, I want to, I want to be able to see the drummer and like, yeah. I don't, you know, mm. I don't know if I ever had this conversation on the podcast. I love this. I've talked to so many artists and musicians. This has never come up one time. And I love this. Cause that's a, that's very interesting that you say that, you know, that, that is very interesting. 
What, why do you think that is? Is that something you always struggled with or has it oh. come and gone? <clears throat> well, it's just because I'm a writer. Is that it? That's the whole reason. That I mean, okay. I just don't, I'm not there. I'm not there to like dance. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that is funny do you ever get it, people like fans saying stuff about that do they notice it do they like you know hey you you seem awkward up there or are you happy up there or has that ever happened have you ever heard any feedback like that i mean i i think some people say it but it's like i don't give a fuck yeah i mean of course yeah yeah i mean i'm with you absolutely i wouldn't care one way or the other absolutely you got to be you right that that's what that's what people really want to go see is genuine I, not somebody trying to be something they're not. I don't know. I feel like we see through that pretty easily as fans.